just three things which we need to keep in mind and then we'll go ahead and understand the working of this first and foremost draw a d latch not one but two of them i have drawn latch one and latch two don't connect any inputs ensure both latches are connected with opposite polarity of clocks opposite polarity of clocks i have ensured that by giving opposite polarity of clocks to transmission gates 1 and 3 and 2 and 4 respectively and connect output of first to input of second this output need not be q always it can be q bar also in this case it is q bar now let's understand how this becomes h triggered and what type of h triggering happens is it positive h trigger negative h trigger or what it is let's slowly get into the details of this okay so let's take case 1 here let's assume my clock to be equal to 1 that means my clock bar is going to be equal to 0 now let's see which all transistors are on before we do that let's just ensure that we give proper inputs terminologies so that we don't get confused for example for latch 1 this is going to be d1 for latch 1 this we will call it as q1 this will be q bar 1 and for latch 2 this will be q2 so once we have ones and twos clear it should not be that much of a problem so let's start case 1 clock 1 is 1 and clock bar is 0 let's first identify which all transmission gates are on so transmission gates which are on are going to be clock is 1 so this transistor is on at the same time clock bar is 0 so this is on so transmission gate 1 is on at the same time clock is 1 so this pmos is off clock bar is 0 so nmos is off transmission gate 2 is going to be off this are my on transmission gates this are my off transmission gates let's go ahead and see what's happening on this side clock is 1 so clock bar is 0 so my transmission gate 3 is also off and my transmission gate 4 clock is 1 clock bar is 0 so transmission gate 4 is on so we have identified transmission gate 1 and 4 to be on and transmission gate 2 and 3 to be off we are just trying to understand how this is a d flip flop the circuit is already being implemented we are just trying to understand how this becomes a flip flop so once we have which transmission gates are on and off let's see because transmission gate 1 is on let's see what happens due to this transmission gate 1 on what happens due to this is nothing but my q1 will be equal to d1 because it's this is nothing but a closed switch correct so the output of inverter 1 would be nothing but output of inverter 1 would be nothing but q1 bar remember this output goes to the input of transmission gate 3 but that is off so here let's see the same thing goes to transmission gate 2 also with an inverter in present but this is also off so at this moment of time q1 bar is present here where transmission gate 2 is off and transmission gate 3 is off so what's happening at q2 because transmission gate 4 is on so this is right now disconnected from the circuit this q1 bar is not being able to pass because transmission gate 3 is off so transmission gate 4 being on it is taking the previous value of q2 through an inverter which is q2 bar and just passing that in this loop so currently my q2 because transmission gate 4 is on my q2 previous value is being hold and this is what is happening when clock is 1 and clock bar is 